I'm, I'm still, it says I'm still broadcasting. Reconnection successful. Okay, we're good. Now it's going to start filming again. Okay, now I'm back. I'm not sure what happened. I guess ZBrush is uh, using lots of computing power right now, so it was just having a hard time. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to close this. Cancel. We're back to where we were. I'm going to select each mesh and make sure the geometry is at its lowest. Yeah, delete higher. I'm trying to get the polygon count down. Back down. Good. Delete higher. Delete higher. Seven million. That's a good start. Okay, let's select this guy. Make it back down to one. Hmm, hopefully this doesn't take too long. Delete lower. Back down. Six million. Back down to one. Shift F. What is... Nine million, nine million. Those are pretty small. 390,000. Okay, now these guys. That is pretty small. The cutouts are pretty small. But these are pretty big, so let's delete those. Delete higher. Now, this guy... He's really small. Um, I'm not sure what what is causing all the issues. Maybe this guy? Nope. Hmm. Uh, okay, let's take a look at this side. Small. Okay, there we go. Large. Let's make that smaller. There we go, here's another accomplice. Delete higher, 5 million, we still have a long way to go. 98, nine, oh, there we go. Let's lower that. Delete. Lower this guy. Okay, now I've only got 4 million. So now I should be fine. Because live boolean's pretty powerful. Let's do this, oh, let's get this guy too. Awesome, okay. Now, let's live Boolean. Quick save, just because I've done a lot of work. Still broadcasting, so awesome. Okay, now I'm going to live Boolean. And just real quickly, if it doesn't take too long, I'm going to make um, really nice textures for this. Make Boolean mesh. Okay. You need remeshing in progress. Not taking as long because it doesn't have all that geometry to calculate when it's trying to live boolean at mesh. Awesome. It's going to be done momentarily. Yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, did it? Let's see. This is 545,000. And this is. Oh, it did make a live boolean mesh. But we've got two here, so I'm going to use the one that's a little bit smaller, maybe. No, let's actually... Hmm. I'm going to start with this bigger one. I've got two. <laughs> let's quick save again, just in case. Um, I'm really impressed with this chainsaw that I've made. Okay, now let's go to... Geometry and Tessimate, and let's go back down to, oh, done. This is just what I wanted. Here's my chainsaw. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, let's let's um, divide back up. Wait, hold on. I just did something. 
Um, that's not good. Horrible. I'm not sure what happened there. I guess you shouldn't play around when sometimes it doesn't remember stuff. This is 6 to 1,000. Let's crank this up to, I'm glad I had two, um, 219,000. But this isn't leaving, this is not leaving ZBrush right now. So I'm actually going to go a little higher. 245. Whoa, that's nice. Let's see what this makes it uh, 886,000. So now I'm going to go into Z app link. Let's quick save. Just because we can. Um, nice. <clears throat> okay. Uh, A. Turn fade off. Drop now. Um, okay, I guess Photoshop is opening. No, it's not. It's just fine. It's just thinking. Okay, update. Awesome. Here's our chainsaw. Now, what color do I want this? Let's start with a new layer. Um, probably red. So, oh, let's just fill our document. Okay, Alt S, Alt Tab. Back to ZBrush. Oh, new layers found. Return to merge. Okay, I've got to go back to um, Photoshop. Okay, Control E, preserve. Um, Control S, Alt Tab, back to ZBrush. Okay, there's a good red color. Now let's Alt. Uh, sorry, uh, A. Back to Photoshop. I'm going to try and fill this whole object. Oh, wait. I don't have to keep going to and from Photoshop. I can just, uh, let's see. Control S, Alt Tab. You could do that back and forth with Photoshop, but one thing you could do is use this color picker, pick the color, and then color fill object. So now. Oh, wait. Color, wait. Color wasn't on, so that that's that. Okay. Color fill object and material. What is going on? Oh, I I might have a uh, texture map on. Nope. I'm I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, I guess we're going to make the colors all in Photoshop. So A, drop now. I'm not sure why that was doing that. Oh, hey Kane, how's it going? Nice. Okay. Uh, Alt Backspace, Control S, Alt Tab, back to ZBrush, re-enter. This is a Christmas chainsaw that I've been making. Uh, Santa built it himself personally. <laughs> Just kidding. That's that's not good. Okay. Now let's see those there are some smaller areas I want to focus on just in ZBrush. So I'm going to select the color BCB BCB yeah turn RGB on, turn Z add off and now I'm just going to fill in those areas or I guess just color now it seems to be working color fill object now the whole object is this nice red. Now what I'm going to do is change hardness in ZBrush. Name with uh, Santa with chainsaw. <laughs> That's funny. This is 
I guess this could be Santa's chainsaw. Um, let's see, I'm going to control shift click. Let's see, I want the edge right there. Now let's uh, A back to Photoshop. Now I'm going to use my uh, Pixabay textures. Okay, let's update. This will be awesome. Okay, let's open up my folder. Pixabay, there we go. Now where is a nice chainsaw look? Ooh, right here. I like it. Let's drag this into a new document. Yes, that is chainsaw material right there. Pixabay has lots of free textures you can use. Control C, I, Control A to select everything. Control C to copy. Back to our chainsaw. Control V into a new layer. Let's Control T make this a little bit smaller. Awesome. This is going to be fun. And let's make this just big enough. Okay. Oh, I didn't make this double sided, so that's too bad. Uh, I like the size of this, so I'm going to Control C, hide everything else. Control Shift C to copy that. Um, Alt F N for a new file or new, yeah. Yeah. New document with that size. That is my chainsaw. Let's rename it Chainsaw. Um, Santa with Chainsaw. <laughs> That could be like a million dollar painting, especially if you had it on a big, huge canvas and you sold it right around Christmas time. Um, okay, there's my chainsaw. Just in case. Just just because I didn't have double sided turned on in ZBrush. So. Okay, now let's um, control E to merge down, preserve the mask. File, save, alt tab, back to ZBrush, re enter. Awesome. There's our beautiful texture that is one sided. Now I'll probably do the other side. So um, A, drop now. This will be a lot of fun. Update and control V. Now I'm going to flip this because. This is actually the other side, so the texture should be reversed. So let's switch um, the width to negative 100 to make it good. Now let's uh, control E, merge that down, preserve, then file, save, alt tab, back to ZBrush. Pick up now. Awesome. Control Shift, click anywhere to show everything. So now we've got our red. That that's pretty good. Um, there were some areas that my chainsaw didn't get, so I'm going to Control Z back to where I just had the blades blade selected. Now I'm going to go in real careful, like with ZBrush, and just. Or I guess one thing I could do, no, I'm going to do this in ZBrush. I could do it in Photoshop, but it might it, it would take a little bit longer than I want to and stuff. Let's turn Z add off. I don't want to affect the geometry. And let's just turn RGB on because I want to affect the color only. And I'm going to select near the areas that are incorrect, and I'm going to paint them. I've got a big brush, so that doesn't work. Control Z. Let's reduce my draw size and use my um, Wacom tablet to let's see um, actually that my Wacom tablet is um, not working that well right now so let's just do this by hand good another th Another thing you can do is you could probably blur these out. <clears throat> Control Z. But it's always fun to just 
color them in and then maybe blur them out great okay let's go to the front okay awesome so select this paint that yeah I'm gonna use my tablet it's much easier And then blur. Let's see, could I do Photoshop? Let's let's see if Photoshop works. Quick save. Just in case. Oh. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is my Christmas chainsaw that I'm designing right now. Um, a, let's go back to Photoshop. Drop now. Let's just see if this works. Now, the, the bleeding that I, um, or the stretching of the textures happens when you're at the very edge, but clearly I can paint on this and maybe avoid most of those edges. So, let's see. B for brush. And then Alt to select the colors. Okay, that's a big brush, little brush. Wait, hold on. Um, I'm gonna try something. Let's select Control D. Select. color range yeah shift selects multiple colors okay I want to select all this red okay let's, let's see if that works okay that does mask out all the red areas Awesome. Awesome. This could be a nice shortcut, sort of. Um, let's select this color, then Alt Backspace. Okay, let's see if that worked. Control S, Alt Tab, re enter ZBrush, pick up ZBrush, or pick up now. So I still have my texture. I'm just going to do this in ZBrush. It's so much faster. Okay, this color. Whoa. Never mind. Oh, I've got Z add on. That's why it was doing that. Okay. And then smooth afterwards. Sometimes, if you do it everywhere, it will look um, strange. Okay, uh, I'm probably going to pick this color. Smooth things out sometimes. Okay. See, um, right here. Okay, good. Making progress. 
Hmm. I guess red wouldn't be the end of the world for the chainsaw, at least on the edges, because, you know, it might um, cut into certain organic materials and stuff. Okay, so... Oh, um, I've got three monitors right now, right? And right now my Wacom tablet is confused. Um, it it thinks I want to use my Wacom tablet on all three monitors at the same time. So the uh, Wacom controls that are geared towards just one computer or one computer monitor um, are actually stretched out to all three monitors. So I can get to every monitor with just my one screen Wacom tablet. So I, and the button that makes the um, Wacom tablet switch from all monitors to one monitor is not working right now. So um, when I'm trying to paint in ZBrush, it's actually stretching my paint strokes out because it has to take into account that I'm actually painting on all three monitors at the same time which is not good. Okay, there's that, and then let's do this. Okay, that's good. Select this color. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, uh, terribly worried about this and there's probably some on the underside good oh there we go right there one thing I could have done um, is I could have masked out Uh, the, this area so it wouldn't um, the any of the textures that I was painting on like right here wouldn't be affected or would yeah the mask would um, make sure that it wasn't affected but that would also mean that I would never that I wouldn't get the other um, colors as well so I don't know but it all worked out so now we're good now our blade is done but I'm gonna do one more thing just be, just because I can let's go back to Photoshop okay this will be fun now I'm going to zoom out okay this is my blade so let's go to pixabay here are my textures now <clears throat> would be good. I'm looking for additional... Ooh, that's an idea. <clears throat> no. Yeah, let's do rust. I like rust. Let's do this rust. Open this up. Okay, let's close this texture because we don't really need this. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Control A, Control C. Then, oh, there was our, oh, ZBrush, or uh, Font Self. Uh, control V. Okay, then Control T. Let's zoom out so we can do this a little quicker. Okay, that's a big texture. Okay, now. I'm going to press Enter. And then I'm going to create a layer mask. Switch to my brush. Make it larger. Paint away everything. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm going to draw back in um, places that I want. So let's select this mask and let's switch from black to white because our uh, clipping mask is totally black right now, so nothing is showing. But when we paint white, anything anything that is white will show through. So I'm going to try some stuff out. I hope this works. Okay. Now I'm going to use um, not my blur tool, but my smudge tool. And I'm going to open up brushes. Oh, where's brushes? I think it's on a different monitor. Um, okay, I th oh, this is brushes. Okay, let's drag this out. Okay, now I... Oh, wait. Um, brush settings. That's right. That's what I'm looking for. Let's delete this. Okay, I've got my smudge tool selected. Now, let's try this brush. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure how to activate uh, preferences cursors. Let's see what that does. Standard, normal, full-size brush tip. Standard. Uh, yeah, full-size brush. Show crosshair in brush tip. Okay, that, that works. Show only crosshair while painting. Show brush leash while smoothing. Okay, let's see if that works. I want to see... No, it doesn't. I'm not sure why. I'm trying to... Let's control alt see. I want to see my brush size as I'm doing this. Okay, that looks fairly nice. Okay, now let's do this one. Oh, the strength is really tiny. Let's crank that up a little bit. Okay, that looks nice. Now, just a few more. That's terrible. Z-Rush with L. Wacom is like painting with a toothbrush. Very true. Um, it is very, um, very wonderful to use ZBrush with a Wacom tablet. It's, it's really, really a great thing. Okay, that, I like that. I like the way that looks. Now, let's do the underside. Good. And then let's Right, okay, I, I like that. Let's see, how do I um, control H? No, I want to see my brush size. Finger painting. Sample all layers, no. Um, edit. Preferences, uh, I'm going to go back to cursors. Let's see if, uh... okay, general auto update when skip transform beep when done. 
colors, workspace, auto collapse, iconic panels, align, enable narrow options bar, tools, over scroll, allow scrolling um, past normal bounds of window. That, oh, sure, I'll enable that. Um, Zoom resizes windows, um, history, file handling, export preferences, scratch disks, cursors, I don't know. I chose standard, hopefully that works. Transparency, guides, grids, and show iconic artboard guides. I don't know. I'm not sure why that's enable remote connections type. No, 3D. I'm not sure. Ooh, paint symmetry. That's awesome. Uh, enhance your drawing experience with the new paint symmetry features. To enable, click enable paint symmetry above. Preferences, technology previews to use. Switch to brush, pencil, or eraser, and select one of the presets from the symmetry button in the option bar. I'll do that later. It's okay. Um, I'm almost done, done anyway. Yeah, I can use... That is so awesome. I'm going to increase the strength 100% because I want the last... Oh, that was the last one. Nope, this is the last one. Awesome. That is the effect I'm trying to go for. Sweet. Okay. Now, I like the way that looks, so just in case it doesn't show up on the other side, let's... Um, I've got the mask selected, so let's hide everything. But those, Control shift c Wait. Control, Control shift c Now I've got that in memory. Now let's turn everything back on. Okay, file, save. No, 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 hold on. I've got to um, control E, preserve mask, file, save, alt tab, back to ZBrush, re enter ZBrush, pick up. Awesome, I like that. Yeah, now I want the same effect on the other side, so A, back to ZBrush. Okay, now I've got that um, uh, this in memory. So update Control Shift V to paste in place. Control T. Now let's uh, negative the width. Now I'm going to move it right over where it was before. Okay, good. Now I'm going to make it look a little different. including this guy. Wait, hold on. No, I'm, I'm smearing the paint, so control... One, two, three, four. So, one, two, three. Okay, I'm just going to live with that. It doesn't matter. Um, control E, preserve. File, Save, Alt-Tab, back to ZBrush, pick up now. So now I've got that on both sides. So now I want this area. So what I was thinking, um, Let's see, uh, freehand, make this a little bigger. No, I don't, I don't want that. Control Z, let's go to stroke, lazy mouse, turn that off. No, I've got to hold down alt while I do that. Stroke, now turn lazy mouse off. So when I hold down control, 
yeah, it was con control. I don't have to worry about that uh, that business. Okay, and right there. Awesome. So now click to invert. Now let's see how this works. Um, A, drop now. Let's see if masking works with uh, Photoshop. Um, okay, uh, Control V. No, no. Let's let's go back to this. Control C. Can wait. Control V. I like that. Let's make that mask. Control A. Let's switch to black. Fill. Then invert to white and brush. Selected. And let's just paint this in. Awesome. This is working just fine. OK, now I want to use the smudge brush. I wonder how this is going to work. OK, now Control E. Preserve. I, I could have some serious stretching, but I don't know. Probably not. File, save, alt tab, back to ZBrush. Good. That looks looked nice. Hopefully, it's just thinking. Two hundred sixty-two thousand or two hundred sixty-seven thousand. So I should see more texture. Um, that that's good. I'm not sure if I divided it up. Control Z. Let's wait. I'm going to divide up. One million. Okay, so that is good. Wait, hold on. Control Z. I don't want. I don't want that to be visible yet. Now let's go to the rest of the areas. Yeah, okay, good. Let's uh, mask out. I think mask affected what we did. Okay, then control click to invert Okay, A, back to Photoshop. Update, Control V. Awesome. Uh, let's create that clipping mask. Control A to select everything. Let's press X to invert our colors. Um, Alt backspace to fill everything with black. Um, uh, X to switch to white. B for our brush. Let's paint that in right here. Okay. If my model was divided up a little bit more, I could get to higher resolution textures, kind of like what you're seeing right now. Okay. Oh, did my... No, I thought my uh, Wacom tablet started working again. I can use it. It's just really hard to um, use. Uh, merge down. Preserve. Uh, Alt S. Alt. Sorry. Uh, Control S. Alt tab. Back to ZBrush. Just like that. Okay, so I guess that, that'll have to do. And let's just get rid of that. I've got a mask right now. Let's turn off the add and RGB. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. When I had that mask, 
and then selected the color. The color was masked, so it gave me a darker, darker color. Kind of interesting. Okay, now let's go to this one. Okay. I'm still going to mask. Yeah, that works. Control, uh, invert. Okay, then A, back to Photoshop. Good. Update. Okay, Control V, Control A. Uh, I'm when you press D it defaults to black and white so then I have everything selected and I want to create a mask so let's do that then make sure black is filled then invert and switch to brush giving the giving us this again and uh oh That's not good. Uh, let's erase that. Okay, switch back to brush. Okay, and then I'm going to select my smudge brush. Pretty cool. It'd be nice if I could get this texture with our object. Okay, um, Control E, Preserve, Alt, Control S, Alt Tab, back to ZBrush. Okay, that gives us this, then that. So uh, I'm going to fix this too, just because I can. A. Drop now. Update. Control V, Control A. Black is selected. Let's make a mask. Oh, I, I filled it with white. I filled it with black now, so now I invert to white and then brush. Brush out just this area. Okay, then smudge doesn't really matter right up here but I guess down here it does a little bit okay control E preserve control S alt tab back to ZBrush fixing that area now we can proceed almost done get rid of the mask paint the mask right about there good then click invert a, just like all the all the other times I've done this, still broadcasting, awesome. Update, spacebar, move around. Okay, Control V, Control A, mask, good. Uh, invert colors to get black. Invert again, B, and then paint that in. Okay, and then select the smudge brush. Okay, Control E, preserve. Control S, Alt Tab, re enter Z brush. Good. Awesome. Now. The other side. Cool. We are almost done. Yeah. Oh, scary. Uh, let's control click this area. Alt or control tab. A. Okay. Moving to Photoshop. Update. Control V. Control A. Mask. Invert colors, fill that uh, B, invert colors, 
So I'm painting white right there. Awesome. Let's, uh, e and then let's turn off scatter. Right. Okay. Then let's select the smudge brush and just like before. Okay. Control E, preserve. Uh, control S, Alt Tab, back to ZBrush. Pick up now. Good. Okay, that's decent. Now um, I have two more sides. Or yeah, let's clear the mask. Uh, create the mask right here. Okay. Wait. That cleared everything. I don't know why. Okay, click to invert. Then A, drop now. I think I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to finish the blades. See how that looks. Go to the gym. Come back and probably finish the rest of the chainsaw. Okay, so Control-V, Control-A, make sure black is selected. Uh, Alt, wait, I'm missing steps. Oh, uh, I had white. I, I filled the document with white, so nothing happened. Black is the primary color, so now I Alt backspace. Wait, hold on, Control-A, yes. Then uh, B, then X to make sure white is selected. And let's paint that in. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. E, that is uh, scaring me a little bit. Okay. Then smudge. Okay, good. Um. The quality of the texture, it looks really good right now, but when it transfers to um, uh, ZBrush, it uh, it's only like 220 something thousand polygons. Um, let's see, Control E, Preserve. Okay, Control S, Alt Tab, back to ZBrush. Printer. It looks like that right now, but then it picks it up and it looks like that because I don't have a lot of polygons right now. And if I clear the canvas and I want to control D, divide everything, it shows everything. So now I've got a million nine hundred, almost two million polygons. So I could create those high resolution. Um, I probably should have just done this from the start, but I was thinking about, about food and stuff, and I, I forgot. Uh, okay, let's mask this area out. So this will look a lot sharper. Okay, let's make sure. Good. Good. Okay. Then A. Okay, yeah, the quality on this this section will be a lot higher. Update, because there are more, there is more geometry in ZBrush to paint texture on. I if this was like an eighty nine thousand, or sorry, eighty nine polygon object that I was painting the high resolution textures on, when it applies to the actual three D mesh, it doesn't have you know. Um, as much areas to um, place the pixels on, so it it uh, looks uh, horrible. But this will look really nice. Control V, Control A, mask. Uh, make sure black is selected. Uh, Control A, delete, which fills the mask with black, and then white. Now B. So now we're getting our textures back. OK. 
Okay. Okay, now I'm going to do uh, smudge. I've got some masks right here, so I'm not sure if this is going to work. But who knows? Okay, control E, preserve. Now, the texture should look a lot nicer. Uh, control S, alt tab, back to ZBrush. Awesome, pick up now, and it will, uh, well, I don't know. Shift F, let's see how many polygons. Doesn't look like there's a lot, but I don't know. It's good. It's a chainsaw, so you're not really going to be worried about the textures when it's carving you in half and stuff. <laughs> okay, here is my chainsaw. Cool. Now I'm going to do one. Wait, hold on. Control Z. Let's back to where that was. Uh oh. Control Shift Z. Okay. Yikes. Clear about the, clear the mask. Um, I want to get just. Um, okay, I guess I can select the textures and stuff. Okay, let's, let's go to, I was just thinking to myself, let's go to Photoshop. Pretty cool. Update. Okay. Now let's select this red, make it a little lighter. And then just, just in case I screw up, I'm going to make a new layer, B. Um, I'm going to turn this off real quick. Oh, that, that's not a good idea. Let's actually turn that back on so I can see what is going on. Okay, um, now I'm going to use my smudge brush at full strength. Let's hope this uh, looks nice. I'm trying to use my Wacom tablet and it's not working all the time. Okay, um, I'm not liking the way that looks too much, so what I'm going to do is filter, filter gallery. Let's see if we can't make this look a little nicer. Ooh, I like that. I love that. That looks really good. Now let's change the blending mode. Ooh. See if I control J that it intensifies. Awesome. Okay, now let's see if those bumps actually translate to um, ZBrush. Control E. Um, wait. Okay, now I'm going to. Control E and preserve mask. Hopefully that works. That worked. So that was cool. So file, save. Now I'm visualizing that I should see that bumpy look. 
in um, ZBrush, which would be pretty nice. So let's Alt Tab back to ZBrush, re enter. Yes, pick up now. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Um, now I just need a company logo. Um, so let's see, Alt, or sorry, A, back to Photoshop. Okay, now let's get uh, uh, crazy with our designs. Um, let's see, I'm going to look. No, I'm just going to paint. Okay. Green. Green circle. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm going to... I've got a really good idea. I love that green. Control J. Let's move this up. Shrink it and stretch it just a little bit. Okay. Control J. Awesome. And then right up top. Okay, Control T. Right. Stretch it out. Now I'm going to go to liquify. Okay, let's zoom in. This is going to be cool. And this, all this stuff goes back to ZBrush. Oh, my um, Wacom tablet is uh, freaking out. Okay, let's see how that looks. Um, okay, I like that. Then let's go to liquify. Okay, then yikes. I'm just going to use my mouse. OK, this looks pretty good. Okay, that looks nice. Now let's do the other one. Uh, liquify. Whoa. Okay, and then I like that. <coughs> let's control T, rotate that just a little bit. Okay, I like that. Now let's let's merge everything down. Control E, and then let's make a layer style for this. Oh, I love it. That is perfect. Perfect. Now I need some like bullet holes. So let's see, rasterize layer style. Uh, yes, so that's what we have. Now let's create a mask. Now let's uh, switch to black and then B, let's uh, just have a few. Uh, 
Uh, okay, now let's smudge that. Awesome. I like that. Okay, there is our fancy design. Rasterize layer. Okay, just, let's see, select both layers and then merge down. Okay, that's that's our design. And then let's just flatten this and preserve everything else. Now let's file, save. This is our final thing we had to do for uh, our chainsaw. Awesome. Huh. Uh, I wanted a little bit more colors, but I guess that's okay. Sweet. Okay, now... Interesting. Oh, it bled through. That's not good. I'm going to select this color. And, whoa, not Shift-Z. Uh, turn Z add off. RGB on. Control-Z. And let's just get rid of this texture stuff that did bleed through. I don't want that. Okay. Right there. And here. Oh yeah, it's all over the place. Let's see, um, besides, I'm going to mask out this top layer, and I'm going to mask out, oh, that's too complicated, uh, let's just delete the paint, do it by hand, okay, good. Awesome. Right on. Okay, now we've got our company logo on our chainsaw of death. Now all these textures that I painted in uh, Photoshop, those are independent from the matte caps you can use. So let's quick save everything. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, so now I can choose different matte caps in ZBrush to apply to the textures that we've painted in Photoshop. So let's see how that looks. Um, let's switch material to toy plastic. So, wait, did that work? I don't think it did. Toy plastic, um, I don't know. I'm not sure why that's not working. Hmm. Quick save. Just in case. I'm going to try and apply just the material. And not the RGB. Toy plastic. Color. Fill object. Yes. Okay, that worked. So now... We've got toy plastic on our Christmas chainsaw. Pretty cool. I like it. Or we could choose Reflect 2 and uh, make sure M is just selected. Color Fill Object. Giving it a more metallic look. Chrome Blue Tint. Color fill. No, I don't like that too much. Let's try reflect red. Color fill object. No, I, I hate that. That's not good. Um, what about C metal? Color fill object. 
Yes, I like that. That's awesome. So that is what I'm going to stick with. And now let's turn floor off and actually make this my document background. Cool. Oh, another thing we can do is we can add lights. So light, light or light cap, new light. Okay, increase it. Maybe that's too intense. Let's dial that down a little bit. Adjust the fall off. So just, yeah, right around the edges. Okay, then a new material. Let's make this over here. And let's make this like blue, light blue. Awesome. Then a new material. Let's place this down here. And let's change this to yellow. And increase that. And reduce its effect on our overall scene. Mm, okay, that's good. Let's try behind. Awesome. And decrease the strength. Yes. Okay, I like that. Now, oh, bye, Kane. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, let's see, uh, document. Uh, save as startup doc. Good. Okay, now we can leave ec edit mode. Let's see, I'm probably going to save this just, just because. Now let's let's go a little crazy with the the blades. So right now we're basically on a Photoshop document. So we can go to our 2.5D brushes. And let's go to the smudge brush. Nice. Let's add some additional spikes. Okay. Sweet. Okay, and then now I'm going to make some cutouts. Oh. That's probably too intense. So we can go backwards. Wait, Control Z. Okay, right there. Now I'm going to change my alpha to something like that, and then die down the RGB and Z intensity. A little bit more. Now let's just make some scratches. Awesome, that gives a little bit of effect. Cool, I like it. Right on. Now let's change the colors of our handle and stuff. So, um, saturation brush, or the intensity, okay, that's regular alpha. Okay, and 
Let's change that again to intensity. Oh, let's uh, alt. Wait, hold on. I haven't played around with these brushes too much. Highlighter brush. No, control Z. Contrast. Yeah, okay. That's kind of nice. And then I'm going to change to drag rectangle. Let's just place a little more detail in certain areas. Increase the look of our... Nice. I like the blade. Pretty cool. What is that? Two point, oh yes, 2.5D brushes are the bomb. So you can be working on any 3D object. Control N. So here is a Z sphere. Let's switch to something a little easier on the eyes. And let's turn off, uh, let's delete all our light caps. Okay, good and go back to a basic color. Okay, good. Fill object. Here is a Z-sphere, right? And we have sculpted on it for many, many months. Um, oh, first we need to make it an active poly mesh 3D. Uh, let's BCB. Oh, I need to turn Z add on. Okay. Here is our, I don't know, asteroid or something. Okay, anyway, that is our model, right? We can, we divide it up a few times, so it looks really nice. And when you leave edit mode, you can paint that object anywhere else on your scene, right? Like right there, right there right here, and it respects your 3D um, environment as well. So you can make a bunch of things like this crab monster right over here, or you can just do a bunch of design work like this. This is all 2.5D brush mode, um, where you're able to place a bunch of your 3D models in your scene and it treats it as a 2D image, right? Now, if these all had geometry, it would have crashed my computer because that is more geometry than my computer can handle. And you can undo. Wait, Shift C, yeah. Um, uh, then right over here, you see your simple brush. These are your 2.5D brushes, 2.5D. And if we select our eraser brush, we can erase anything that we can see on screen. Pretty nice. So if you were doing like concept work or silhouette designs and stuff, you could use these 2.5D brushes to your advantage to get all sorts of different uh, ideas, ideas very quickly. Um, let's see. Let's just say I want to use um, the steak hook brush. This is a really cool brush. You can pull out pieces of geometry super easy if you were trying to get like design work. You could use this snake hook brush, which actually looks like a 3D object that is being extruded from your mesh. So this is really cool, and you can really come up with lots of awesome ideas really, uh, really quickly just using this. And it is super versatile and fast and fun and exciting. 
and you can make things big. Let's see, control N. Let's draw something on the canvas. So now I've cleared my canvas, right? And you can select your, uh, I guess any one of these if you wanted to, and then just select your 2.5D brushes. And let's use a simple brush. This is in 2.5D mode. You could draw out uh, objects. Or let's select a sphere brush. So you can basically draw almost 3D spheres on your scene. Control N. Let's get a nice look. Now let's just say right now I was trying to make a um, alpha, right? That I wanted to use in a video game. If you hold down your tilde key, right below and left uh, from your if you're looking at your numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, on the very left of 1 is the tilde key. If you hold that down, you can click and drag and move your texture in ZBrush around so you can make really awesome repeating seamless textures. Let's hold down tilde key and move over to continue our design work. This is really awesome. Okay, I'm over by the edge. So let's see, I'm going to paint right there. But if I hold down the tilde key, you'll notice that that is not uh, repeating because it, it hit the edge and I didn't uh, tilde the key fast enough. So if I control Z back to where I didn't paint that, I can um, continue designing my alpha. So. Okay, good. Looking pretty decent. Looks like a bunch of uh, bubbles. I don't know. Pretty cool. Now, it's looking better and better. And this is all a repeating texture. And if you're like, how, how big is this? What, what size docu document am I working on? Uh, you can come up, to, come up here to document. And right in here, it tells you your document size. Right now, we're working on 1479 width by 920 height. You can turn Pro off. Pro constrains your results. So if you move this a little bit, with, with Pro on, it moves the other slider as well. Uh, so if we wanted a 2048, wait, 2048 texture by 2048. Whoa, hold on. 20, 2048 by 2048, you could resize your document and that will stretch what you have and you can zoom out over here to look at your whole document. Now I want to start over, so control N. Now with the same sphere brush, let's see, yeah, sphere brush that is quite a bit bigger. Let's see what's going on. Control N. Um, hold on. I'm going to start a new scene just because sometimes ZBrush uh, doesn't know what to do. Okay, here's my dude, edit, control N, document, 2048, whoa, hold on, 2048 
by 2048, enter, uh, resize, now it should work. So let's go to our simple brush and change to a sphere brush, giving us that, and then we can paint on it. Okay, here's my brush, and if I hit tilde key before I get to the edges, I can move the actual texture so I don't have to worry about um, um, not creating a seamless texture. Looking pretty good. Awesome. So this is a nice, hold on, I'm almost done. This is a great texture that repeats horizontally. Awesome. So if I hold down the key and I move over, it is seamless in left and right directions. Pretty cool. And you can move this anywhere you want to to continue your textures elsewhere. Awesome. Really cool if you want to make textures. Okay, so now let's see, I don't want to uh, hit the edges with this texture, so what I'm going to do is tilde key, hold it down, now I just have a little box to paint, and then I'll have a 2048 by 2048 seamless texture. Pretty awesome. Okay, um, still broadcasting, awesome. Okay, so I'm almost done, and then I will figure out what videos I could make next, and see you guys in the next video. Let's see. I am almost done. Okay, awesome. Now we're done. So this, if I hold down tilde key, I can move in any direction, and the texture repeats on all sides. So this is a seamless texture. Pretty sweet. And the 2.5D brushes are really awesome and useful. Um, and you have different brushes like the hook brush, which just stretches geometry if we had a big brush. Um, let's see, draw size. I don't know, maybe that isn't, uh, let's, fiber mesh is really fun because you can paint grass-like textures, right? Now we've got some shrubs on our seamless texture. Pretty awesome. Let's see, right here, let's focus right there. Pretty cool. And as long as I stay inside the circle when I'm making my texture, it still remains seamless when holding the tilde key. Another powerful thing with the 2.5D brushes is you can use Photoshop style 
um, intensity brushes. Um, let's see. Control Z. Let's try shading. I don't, um, hold on, I haven't played with these uh, a lot recently. Saturation. So if you have a lot of color in your scene, you can bring out the colors. Hue shifter. Um, a lot of it isn't working right now because I'm working on this texture in 2.5D mode. Um, oh, this is fun. Matte cap. So whatever you select, it creates a matte cap. Um, let's start a new scene real quick. Let's just say I designed a really awesome cartoon brush. New light. Make this a little blue and move it up. Nope, the other one. Let's see, okay, that one, move it up, then select the other brush, let's make that a little, dark, a little darker, a new light, down here, move it down, Let's select our blue brush, make it more intense. Okay, right there. Let's just say this is a nice look I wanted to uh, keep. There is a um, switch. Okay, now this uh, circle is a flat image. So now we can come down to uh, matte cap. Wait. Oh man. Darn. I don't know. I'll I'll talk about that a little bit later. But you can make um, really awesome matte caps uh, very quickly. Yeah. Anyway, um, probably the next video that I'll make will be. Um, Sculpting a character, just because I'm trying to uh, always uh, work on my character design uh, techniques and things like that. So, oh, Sculptress Pro Mode on. Character, his neck. His chin. His head. Something like that. Okay, eyeballs. Back of head. I guess I'm making it right now. Shift smooth. Okay. Chin, smooth that out. Okay, then stomach, 
so many things you can do with ZBrush. Awesome. Okay, hips. Hips and legs. My Z intensity is really down. Let's turn this up. Okay, he's got legs. There's about where his knees are going to start. Lower legs. Okay, and then feet. Back of feet. Evaluate character. Oh. Um, B S H. Snake hook brush. B I N. Right. Um, pull out his arms. Pretty cool. Um, smooth that out. B S H. Let's pull out his hand, or his two fingers, or his claws. I like that. Sort of. No, I actually like fingers better. Yeah. Anyway, I'll I'll make a character like this character like this next time I make a video. Now let's uh, see what this character looks like after frame and then go to 2.5D mode and let's find our eraser and just wipe him out of existence. Sweet. Okay, next time I will try to work on a character like that. So thank you everybody for watching and stay tuned for the next one.